How's the mood at school? Tension is high. People are nervous about the upcoming trial. I love what we have. I can't just stop and leave. I hate only seeing you inside these four walls. You don't believe in anything. If I can't see, touch it. It's hard for me to believe in it. There could never be anything that connects you to me. Welcome to Chatbox with Sam. Tonight's guest is actor, director, and producer Oscar Torre. Hello, Oscar. Thank you, Thank you very Hi, much. Hi, Samantha. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm honoured that you've uh, attended Chatbox with Sam tonight. I'm very excited, and my daughter was because my family loved the hangover. And your officer Vasquez, uh, Mexican police. Yes. Probably corrupt the character, <laughs> but fun. It's always the bad things that are fun, isn't it? Totally, yeah. totally. But I, I never play. I never see it as if I'm playing the bad guy. Honestly, it doesn't matter how dark the character is. I, I always justify my existence and my being and the way I am. And I think that's my job is to fight for this character. Regardless of how I really feel about him, how Oscar feels about him. The moment I, I take on the job, I then have to find a way to uh, make it real for me and to justify why I behave the way I behave and, and you know, tell my truth as I carry. So humor is very powerful for the soul. And if you make someone very. laugh, they remember you. So, especially during tough times. I know. If we have been, uh, in some, we've been in a few tough times, haven't we? And um, with COVID, and it's been very, very difficult for the industry, people in the industry, and it's been very strict. and. Um, with the people that I've had on my show have already said, you know, you, you got the shutdowns and they're very strict on set with the guidelines and the mask and making sure mm -hmm. you're vaccinated. And uh, and they were completely out of work, completely shut down. You know, at least if you worked in a convenience oh. store, you could get, still go to work. So I happen, I happen to, I happen to play one of the lead roles in the first film that shot during COVID. Yes. In Los Angeles. It's called Seventh and Union. And um, so all the protocols and all that that were implemented, they were basically, we were the guinea pigs oh, in our God. film. They were learning as they went along. We were the first film that actually started and finished. I think there were a couple that started it and then they got shut down because of COVID. And we were the first ones to start and finish during COVID. Oh, I did see that. I know you've done quite a few shorts and TV series, and you've worked on uh, Tyler Perry. The House I was there for four years. Yes. Four, four seasons. It, it ended uh, last July. Last July was the end of the show finale. Oh, how does it yeah. feel when you're actually coming off a show? And when, it's, when you've been on there that long? Uh, you know, especially in that one, um, it was a little sad because it's rare for an actor to, you know, unless you're in uh, law and order that's been going on for 20 years or one of the CSIs, you Cold know, most case. jobs are, yeah, you know, most of the jobs are not that long. So to know that I had work for four years, it's, it's, it's great years. It's rare for an actor. Yeah. That Aww. was a huge blessing and, and fun as well. You know, I got to play a role that I, usually don't get cast in, which is, I played the head of the Italian Mafia. <laughs> you have the voice. <laughs> Vinnie Malone, yeah, yeah, from New York. <laughs> yeah, yes. A lot of Italians went to New York way back when, in the, uh, when they were migrating over, I think. Totally. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, I'm Cuban, but uh, yes. you know, we have a lot in common. We use our hands, we're passionate, we like to eat. So, yes. you know. The Irish are the same way. My family's Irish, we're black Irish. So there's a Spanish Armada. There so, you go, yeah. In all the things that you've played in, what do you see in your own character in one of the casts that you did? Is there anyone that you can identify with? You know what? There's so many for different reasons. 
And obviously, people will look at it, especially that character behaves badly. They're like, really? But I'm, and it's probably not that part. Yeah. Um, never been in prison. Never, you know. But um, <laughs> but I think it's the the. I I was trying to find the human aspect of the character, um, and that I identify with, obviously, because I'm human. Uh, Jack Nicholson said, there's a famous Jack Nicholson quote that says, you're 75% like any role you'll ever play. And um, it's finding that 25% that, you know, makes it's, the acting comes in. Yeah. But this, no, I mean, there's some, I've been blessed to play so many roles that I, that I, I identify with something or I bring something to it that maybe wasn't there. And luckily I've been allowed to, to, I did a show that I think it's the show that put open doors for me uh, when I moved to LA called Kane. Okay. And I played a Cuban rafter um, who was Jimmy Smith's right hand guy. And um, he did some bad things, but he was a good guy. There's one line in my first episode that I say, I do what I do for my family. Oh. He, he, he questions what I'm doing. Jimmy Smith's, his character questions who I am. And I say, hey, I do what I got to do for my family. Aww. And I go, that, that's the key to this role because I can identify with that. Obviously, I wouldn't go to the to the lengths he went, my character went, but I've never been in his position either. So who knows? I hope I, I wouldn't go that route. <laughs> I think you've got he, your head on your shoulders, Oscar. I, I think he did too. Um but it's how he justified what he did and why he did it. And that was his focus. I have to feed my family. I have to survive. It was a matter of survival for him. Yeah. Um, so that was one character I did. A, after that, I did a Spanish film. It was the first Spanish film um, produced by an American studio, Lionsgate. And the movie was called Ladron que roba ladron. It was pretty big in the Spanish market. Oh, you can try nice. saying that. Ladron que roba ladron. Oh Which my! Like... Okay. Yeah, let me try. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Everybody will know what you just said if you put something. Is that it? Okay. 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 Roba. 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 Muchas gracias. Perfect. A thief who robs a thief was the name of the movie. Um, and I played an out of work, out of work actor that gets recruited to be a, a, a one of the thieves, part of the team. It's like, oh, it's kind of like Ocean's Eleven. Um, oh, okay. We did a film similar. It was a heist film. So, what inspired you into this particular career? I kind of fell into it. Honestly, I was in college and I had one more. I had a class left. Um, and my girlfriend at the time, I asked her to sign me up for a, for a class, a certain class. It wasn't an acting class because I was very shy. Oh. But the class that I, I wanted to be, that I wanted to attend was full. So she signed me up for an acting class because it was the, there was one acting class that was open at the time that I needed. But she signed me up for the acting class because she thought it was humorous to put me <laughs> in an acting class because she knew that I was so shy. And uh, and it turned out that you know she she gave me my life in a way. She, she was right, wasn't she? <laughs> she was right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, so so you're in so you're in the acting class, and you decided at that moment this was for you. Uh, no, no, no. I wish I could say that it was like that. But no, I basically sat in the acting class with my arms crossed, thinking these people are crazy. They're going on stage, make make believe something, pass the, the invisible balloon, and all those acting <laughs> exercises. <laughs> and I'm like, this is this is crazy. And towards towards the end of the class, the teacher uh, called me aside and said, "Listen, you need to go up and do an exercise, or else I can't pass you. You're gonna you've been here for the last three months." And you have, you've never gotten up. You just sit there with your arms crossed. <laughs> <until> the, <laughs> so, 
So I had to do an exercise, and the exercise was something, bring a real moment from life on stage, something personal to you. Okay. Couldn't think of anything. But at the, recently before that, a year or so before, maybe a couple of years before that, my grandmother had passed away. And I remember saying goodbye to her at the hospital, going in the room and saying goodbye to her. Oh. And um, so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to say goodbye to my grandmother. And uh, so I started remembering everything that I had no idea what I was doing. I started remembering everything that I felt that day, the how it was cold in the hospital, how I waited, what was on TV. At the time, I totally remember that was on TV. It was a World Series playing on TV at that time. And finally going into the hospital and to the, to the to the unit that she was in and saying goodbye to her. Oh, how awful. I see you, intensive care unit, and saying goodbye to her. Went up on stage. I sat on the floor like I had done in the hospital. I had sat on the corner in the hospital waiting to be called in to say goodbye to my grandmother. And, um, and something magical happened. When I stood up, on stage, my grandmother, I saw my grandmother there. And everything that I had planned to say, which is what happened from real into hospital, that I, I read to her Psalm 23rd from the Bible, which was her favorite Psalm. That's what really happened in real life. But on stage, I couldn't get the words out. I just saw her there and it was, it was incredible. It was, I just hugged her. Oh. And that's all, that's all I could do on stage. I couldn't say anything. I had planned that I was going to read Psalm 23rd and all that. And I ended up just hugging her and I started crying. It was, oh. it was an incredible experience. And that was the moment I, I was hooked. That yeah. was the moment I was. Um, and the teacher called me aside after class and said, maybe, you know, maybe you should uh, take this a little bit more serious. That something happened there. And then she invited me to an acting class that she taught. Uh, her name is Teresa Maria Rojas, well-known teacher in South Florida, which is where, where I started. Mm -hmm. um, she said, maybe you should take it a little bit more serious. And she invited me to this acting class that she taught at night. And I started attending. And same thing, for a long time, I would just sit there and watch what I was learning. Just from watching. Even though I wasn't going up, I was learning. And at first, I was horrible, honestly. It wasn't like, oh, I was a natural. No, no, I was horrible. But I knew inside me that that with time I could get better if I put the work in. And that was something that motivated me. And I remember her saying, she would always say in class, there are two types of actors. Some are natural and everything comes naturally to them. Yeah. And then there's other actors or artists, I guess, who work so hard at their craft that they reach the same level. As those who, who they, they oh, come natural. natural, yeah. In fact, many of them get farther hmm. because those who come so natural to them sometimes take it for granted and don't put the work in. Right. And I'm like, listen, I don't know if I fall in the talented or in the, but I do know that I can work hard. That I can do. Oh. So, to this day, I don't know how talented I am, but I do know that I work hard and it's gone pretty well. But it's always, I've always had the same mentality of when I was first starting out that I need to. I've never taken it for granted. Even if I know, even if I knew the project wasn't going anywhere. Right. The moment I committed, I've always put in the same type, amount of 100%. work. 100%. Be, be it Hangover 3 or be it a job that I'm doing for as a favor that I know nobody's going to see. Right. Oh, you seem a good soul. You know, I think uh, you got soft, you know, and, and also I think that's uh, respect. I wouldn't, I was going to say pride, but I wouldn't think it's pride. I think it's respect that comes into play with that. You know, you you give people your words and, and then you follow it up. Totally. Yeah. And it, that, the work, the job means everything to that person. And in your career, obviously, you've worked on short films, TV series, you've been in films. You've worked on The Boatman and that Spanish name, which I'm not going to even try and pronounce because I sound ridiculous. 
Ladrón que roba ladrón. Beautifully said. I couldn't have said it better myself. A rain and not sunshine. Suicide blog. Suicide blog. Well, that was one of my first jobs. Right. That job, Suicide Blonde, there's two jobs that Suicide Blonde and Libertad, Freedom. Uh, it was in English. They put a Spanish title, but we call it Freedom. Right. Um, that was the beginning of my career. And both those jobs kind of marked in a way, the way that I, that I approached kind of get work in a way. For Suicide Blonde, it's a crazy story about synchronicity. You know, when you set a, a goal, and I, at that point, I wanted to get into the industry. I wanted to do English films and TV. Right. And um, I knew this guy who I wasn't, I wasn't friends with him, but I was friendly with him. And he needed a ride to that production company of Suicide Blonde because the director wanted to talk to about a role. So I gave him a ride. Mm -hmm. That's what I was. I was a guy's ride and I, I got off with him and I went in and it was, he was there to meet the director, not me. The director didn't know who I was, didn't care. I had not done really anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I walked in and then the guy begins to shoot himself in the foot. Basically, listen, I don't really care about uh, doing this type of project and blah, blah, blah. He starts saying oh, to the director. What not to say. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm like, I can't believe this guy's doing this. <laughs> so I, when the guy was done, I said to the director, hey, I wouldn't mind doing this type of project, just so you know. <laughs> I have this monologue of a play that I've been doing, and I want to do a monologue. And he goes, no, 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 but I'll call you in for an audition once we start casting. And that's how I, that's how I got that role. I auditioned. It was the fourth lead in the film. It was awesome. right at the beginning. It's the movie that brought me to L.A. because mm -hmm. they did all the post-production in L.A. and they needed, needed me to come in and do some um, dubbing of some scenes that ADR, it's called ADR, mm -hmm. uh, basically dubbing myself some scenes that they had issues with sound. So yeah. thanks to that movie, I moved to, uh, to Los Angeles. And that was right at the beginning of my career. And the other one was Libertad, which I, I had met the director and I stayed in touch with the director. That was one thing. I stayed in touch with the guy. And the other thing was that he offered me a role. He offered me a good role in the film. And uh, but I wanted to play the lead role. Aww. I felt like I, I felt like I identified a hundred percent with that role. And I couldn't see anybody doing a better job than me for right. that role. And I told him I wasn't being I wasn't being cocky or. At least I don't think I was. No, you just you just felt it, right? I felt it, and and, yes. and they claimed it, and I asked him for it, and then he's like, "Well, you know, he had somebody else in mind." I go, "Listen, I'm doing a play about a Cuban raft synchronicity. It happened that I was doing a play at that moment about that had to do with the same subject matter as the film. The film I play this political prisoner in Cuba who escapes on a raft, and I go, come watch, come watch the play." be my guest, come watch the play, and we'll talk if you don't think I'm right. And he came to watch the play, and after the play, he said, hey, man, the role's yours. Oh, see? It panned out. And, and that role gave me the confidence to, to pursue this career in a way. It was key for me because I realized that, you know, I can do this. I can, I can make a living doing this. I know it'll be hard. There's nothing easy about this business, but I can do this. Right. And it gave me that confidence to like, when you feel something, ask for it, claim it. Go with it. All I can do is say no. Exactly. Kane, when I did Kane, for same same mentality, when I did Kane uh, for CBS here, mm -hmm. they wouldn't even see me. I had just moved to LA. I hadn't done anything in LA, really, any real credits in LA. Right. My manager said to me, which I still have the same manager, she said, why don't you put yourself on tape and we'll send it to them? They don't want to see you. Well, we'll make sure they see you one way or another. They can always say no afterwards, but at least you do your part. Right. And I sent the tape and then they called me in and I auditioned and, and you know, the rest is history. I got, I got to do that role that opened door, opened all doors for me in Los Angeles, in Hollywood. Yes. 
Absolutely. And look where you are now. Amazing. Have you got anything in the future that you'd like to share? Um, I know you've mentioned Watergate and Julia Roberts for another project. So would you like to share a little bit about those that sure. you're allowed to talk about? It's called Gaslit. Uh, it's on stars. Uh, stars Sean Penn and Julia Roberts. And uh, we shot eight episodes and I'm in four of them. I'm actually in five of them, but without giving anything away, I'm in four of them. Um, and it's it's about the Watergate scandal. Mm -hmm. And I play a, I play a key player in the Watergate scandal. Let's let's just leave it at that. And okay. it was you know it was a lot of fun shooting that. We just finished that last the end of uh, 2021, mm -hmm. and now it's coming out April 24th. I did two episodes of Star Trek Picard for the new season. That that will be that will be coming out as well, and I have a film called Seventh in Union mm -hmm. that should be released soon as an Amazon original film, and that's the movie that I was talking about. That was the first film that shot in Los Angeles during COVID. Yes, the ones that were so when you watch the film, you'll know that we what we were going through in real life doing doing that movie. Exactly, especially with all the COVID restrictions, and then so it yeah, scary. it was it very, very scary. scary. Yes, very scary at that time because no one wanted to even leave the house, you know. And you, you didn't know anything. You there was no vaccine. And totally. I mean, I I basically left the house because I needed to work. Yes. And luckily, I I had this opportunity, uh, but it was it was scary. And, each, and the industry shut down for quite a long time, really. There was no work. I know a lot of actresses and actors that had no work at all. They, You know, it was very, very closed doors, you know. Yeah, well, most, yeah. I, I was very blessed. Yes. I have to say, I was very blessed and, and lucky. If you were going to inspire the younger generation, what would be your main focus? That I think to inspire them, I would say if they want to be filmmakers. Yes. This is the best time ever. Why is it the best time ever? When I was growing, when I was starting in the business, you needed to have some money to do to do films. And if you shot on film, good luck, you know. And video looked crappy, but now you have phones. Yes. This 4K. You have final. Uh, uh, you have. Um, all kinds of apps and stuff to make it look better, to give the film look to, you can do miracles with, with a phone, tell your story, shoot it with whatever you have. If you happen to have a good camera, go ahead and shoot it with a camera. If not, use the phone, but don't wait for anybody to give you an opportunity. The movie, that, the short film that's, that's out on the film festival circuit that I directed and my wife, uh, Chudy Two stars in it with Roberto Sanchez. I, I wanted to tell this story but I had certain limitations in being able to tell the story at the time. So we shot it with the iPhone. And we used nice lenses and lights and everything. Nobody knows what camera I used. Unless you're a director of photography, nobody knows. That's awesome. We has, has gone into tons of film festivals. It's doing really well. And um, and we shot it with a phone. That's great. We shot that it with the nice. iPhone. It's, I mean, there are, there's no excuse if you really want to do it, to okay. not do it. Tell your story. We all have stories to tell. Tell them. Go to an acting class. That's the other thing I tell you people when they say, hey, I want to be an actor. How can I be in a show? I go, well, take acting classes. Right. You don't show up in a hospital and say, hey, I want to be a doctor. I mean, have a little bit of respect for the profession. Take acting classes. People yes. think it's like, because we all act in real life. So I, I get it. Yeah. I get it. We act as, and I tell people the same thing. I say to people, there's certain skills you need to learn yeah. to be able to make a living as an actor. It's a highly competitive industry with very well skilled, very skilled uh, professionals. So don't make it harder on yourself by not knowing what you're doing and just thinking that you can get away with, oh, because I'm natural and I'm funny at parties or I'm an actor. <laughs> Funny at parties, I like that one. You can't do it because you're funny at parties. And my response is, why not? <laughs> I'm always funny maybe, at parties. <laughs> maybe you can. Maybe you can. But not what me, I tell no. People, no, no, not me. <laughs> but what I tell people is like, but when they ask you to 
to do the same joke 10 times and do the same reaction. And that's when the skill comes in. Yeah. Once you can get away with it once. People can be natural. Once something happens and you react, great. But once they're doing take 20, you have to right. do the same thing and react like it's the first time you heard that line. That's, you know, that's Yeah, that, I wouldn't think that's so easy. Doing the exact same reaction, that wouldn't be very easy to do. Because you have we, to hear we, it's not... We don't even sign our name the same way twice. Exactly. And it's not that you do the exact same reaction, but you have to hear it as if it's the first time. Or right. you have to say it as if it's the first time coming out of your mouth. Or as if you don't know what you're going to say next, like we do in real life. Mm -hmm. That's You know what you're going to say next because it's written. You've been right. looking, you've been studying it for the last two weeks, month, months, those lines. And now you have to say like it's coming out of your mouth for the first time. <laughs> and you have to do it 20 times as if it's coming out of your mouth for the first time. That takes that takes practice and skills Scale. and uh, a lot of putting time in and being connected emotionally to what you're saying. It's not right. just saying it. It has to mean something to you. So I, I tell people, to go to school. <laughs> learn Brain. it learn it properly learn it. Yeah. how has music influenced your life it's uh my wife will laugh at this question i have no rhythm whatsoever <laughs> no rhythm whatsoever but it has i mean there's i think we all have music is a big part of all of us even if even if we don't like music right music is a big part of us you hear a song and it immediately there's a certain reaction to that song if it means something to you if it was at a time in your life where you were going through something you connected with that sound so as an actor to me music is important right but don't ask me to sing or dance because then you know I, i'll be starving <laughs> uh, but it's it's a big part and as a filmmaker as a director music is huge it can make or break a scene did you know that you have to sing a song before you leave my show today? <laughs> Just uh, kidding. <laughs> no, I'm leaving early. <laughs> no, that's, a, that's a good excuse, <laughs> but not a good enough one. <laughs> I was just going to throw that in as the last ensemble, you know. I thought I'd just put that in there. Happy birthday. Just for you. Is <laughs> Happy it your birthday? birthday to... Not till December. You're lucky. Okay. January. <laughs> Capricorn? Are you a Capricorn? No, December. Sagittarius. Oh, okay. What are okay. you? I'm a, I'm a Capricorn. January. Are you? Oh, yep. you're the goat. The, the goat. Yeah. <laughs> always, always slowly climbing. <laughs> well, you know, and they do a lot of. They, but my friend Bonnie, the yeah, other producer, she loves goats. So, you know, I don't know too many Capricorns, but you do seem a very good soul, my darling. <laughs> thank you. So, thank you know, you. Irish, Irish. I've got a big Irish family. Well, I'm an archer, but half horse, half human, with an archer. And they say that the archers miss a lot, but when they do score it it's it's pretty when they do get that star it's pretty big you know but it doesn't happen very often with us but it happens but it does happen uh -huh. just gotta just gotta line right with the stars so you like astrology a little bit i don't know that much about it but i i i, uh, I do like it when it's convenient right when i like what i hear when I, I don't like what i hear i'm like I don't believe in that. They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> but when it, when it says the, the years, you have a bright year ahead of you. You will accomplish great things. I'm like, ah, they're onto something. I believe that sometimes what we throw out in the universe comes back at us like a boomerang. I totally believe that. That I do believe. I totally believe in the law of attraction. I believe yes. in synchronicity. The secrets. Have you ever have you know about that? The secrets. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Esther Hicks. You know what Esther Hicks? Ask and it is given. Right. There's yes. a book called Ask and it is given, but you got you have to ask uh, the right thing. Yeah. And the right way. Mm -hmm. Or something better. I ask. I say, or something better, because I I've learned over the years that sometimes I want something, and uh, it doesn't go my way. There, I'll give you an example. There, there was a 
I was up for a show and I really wanted the role. And it was, and they offered me the role. They said, you got the role. But then they were supposed to send the contract and it took forever to send the contract. And we, oh, no. my manager would reach out to them and I wouldn't get the contract. And I was excited about doing this. And I'm like, it's not getting here. It's not getting here. It's not getting here. In the meantime, I auditioned for a few other, th- for a few other things, which I didn't think I would get. Mm-hmm. And one of them was the Tyler Perry show, The House and the Half Knots, which mm-hmm. is the show that I told you gave me work for, for the last four years. Right. I had worked for the last four years. The show that I wanted, that they offered me a role, but they didn't send me the contract on time, that character was a principal character on the show, but it, he would get killed at the end of the, the series. Got you. At the end of the year. Mm-hmm. So I would have worked on that show for one year, one season, and that's so- it. See, it's a great, great season. I signed the contract with Tyler Perry, the house and the half knots. And out of nowhere, I get the contract for the other show the next day. And it was too late. See, like, you got wow, the something better. I got the something better that I you never did. planned on it. Never planned on it. Never thought about it. I went in and I auditioned for the Tyler Perry show. Didn't think I was going to get it. Forgot about it. Until my manager called me and said, hey, you booked that role that you auditioned. I'm like, what role? I, I, I was really even confused about what role I had booked. Right. Wow. It was a something better. There was something better out there for me than I had ever planned or imagined. I think it's always sad when you, especially for the viewers. So it must, I can't imagine what it's like for you after four years. I suppose it's like being at a job. You're there four years and then you, and then he ends and you have to go on. Mm-hmm. It's always sad to say goodbye to something, but it's, it's also gives you another, another road to say hello to something else, you know, but the viewers watching something, it's like when it's the last season or the last episode of that season. And it's like, you know, because you never know whether it's got the funding to have a second season or a third season. You know, sometimes you just never see that thing again. And, it, and you, know, yeah. you just never know. But uh, but there's always something new on the horizon to audition for. Like you've just got three projects. So you're no, always... I did, I did you, Gaslit you, right afterwards. I did the show Gaslit right, right. right after that show ended. I started Gaslit, which there was always the show ended. I'm like, okay, this is it. It ended. Now what? And little did I know there was, you know, something waiting for me that was totally different, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, very high profile blessing to be in a cast that big. Dan Stevens is also in the cast. Right. From the UK. Yes. Um, And what what was the show that we had? Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey. Oh, Downton Abbey. I I was on a bus, right? We were all going to Ascot in London, you know? And someone said to me, because I'd just come from America and I was sitting with my mum, because my mum lives in England, and they said, are you that actress from Downtown Abbey? I said, I've never even watched it. Oh, I can see that. I can see that. I don't, I don't know think which... she has light eyes. Yeah, you have light eyes. She does. I don't think she does. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was like, no, because <laughs> I, I had the hat on because we all were going to Ladies' Day at Ascot and I had the hat on and it was tilted and I had net over You look like face. a movie star. <laughs> when I had the hat on, I did, not today. But there was another one um, that I really like, the Peaky Blinders. That's That was my, the old Birmingham from where I was raised. In I've England. seen a couple episodes of that. I haven't gotten into the whole... Because they've gone for a while, and I start, I got to it late, but I see it's great, and I saw Tom Hardy was also in it at some right. point. Yeah, maybe you should audition. I think you'd be perfect. I'll teach you how to do the Birmingham accent. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> All right, darling. I'll, turn, I'll, sound, I'll probably sound like you're Spanish. <laughs> I could not speak. It sounds beautiful. It's a beautiful language. I'm just, my tongue doesn't move that way. And it's just like, I don't know. It's just like frozen. <laughs> in I'll space. be like, I'll be like Brad Pitt when he did the, what is it? Lock, stock and barrel or something. <laughs> and he's talking, nobody understood what he was like. Nobody knew what he was saying. And I, always wondered, I always wondered, was that him that wasn't getting the accent quite right? Right. Came up with this thing that he just mumbled and I'm like, that's brilliant regardless right yeah i know i 
I know, I've been asked to do an American accent in, in a project which you know about. And um, I'm like, I'm going to have to get someone to teach me how to do the American accent too, because I can do Irish and a little bit of French and definitely English. But the American accent, I said, I can only do it if I had a glass of wine. Hmm. He said, we can't, have, we can't have wine on set, Sam. Okay. <laughs> we'll be drunk the whole time. <laughs> I know, right? Hey, do you have a role that she's drunk the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the compliance officer would be very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Nor would my lever. <laughs> Sorry. This is a great interview. I'm, this is awesome. I'm having this a is, lot of fun. And me too. This is a chat box with Sam between a goat and an archer. It's perfect. Perfect. <laughs> We'd have to get your wife in. We'd have a right laugh. <laughs> oh, she's great. I bet she, yes. I, love her. I will. I will. Absolutely. And she can talk, so she can, Good. You, you'll ask her one question and she might go 40 minutes giving you an answer. Perfect. That's fine. Your wife has got full reign when she goes, what star sign is your wife? Taurus. Taurus. Ooh. Lovely yeah, people. Me. Yes. So you got the bull and the goat. A little crazy. <laughs> You'll be the first one to tell you. I, huh? I have not met, I have not met one saying Taurus or Gemini, which are their, <laughs> not one. I'm yet to meet one. I really, I could say that about Gemini, but I think, I've got a few best friends. They're Taurus ladies. They're, they're very good because you're both Earth, right? So you both. Yeah. Grow. Oh, we we're a good match. We're a good yeah. Match. And she she would she, <laughs> she would say that I'm pretty crazy myself. So there you go. You gotta be crazy, sir, to live in a crazy world. I'll tell you to make, to be especially to do what we do and make believe and. Mm -hmm. Do you play any instruments, Oscar? No. No, unfortunately, unfortunately not. That's okay. We have a piano here that my wife plays beautifully, but I, I just, I don't have an ear. She, music will be playing. She goes, do you hear that note? I'm like, no, no. <laughs> don't beat around the bush. Just say it how it is. I love it. <laughs> no. But you know, without music, you know, hot music does hold memories. As you said, we can all, we can all relate to a song that will bring up a memory and also without the music you know it's like in a film it does make a huge impact like Hans Zimmer I think makes a huge oh, impact on something you've got genius. that background music and and what and have you ever seen them clips on YouTube and they'll put it up on social media and the actors are doing like there was one with John Travolta doing Grease Lightning and there was no music <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of funny they're like uh, 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 and it looked really ridiculous but we like the music <laughs> it, it totally is yeah <laughs> but you know i was just saying they probably actually did that without the music right we On do set. that i then just a man and a woman i have a scene mm -hmm. that they're dancing my wife is dancing with roberto sanchez it's this dance there was no music we but we, what we did is we played the music mm -hmm. And, but at that point, normally when you're shooting the film, a lot of times you don't even know what song you're going to use. Right. But we played a song that kind of had the same beat that I, that I was looking for. We played a song so they could hear it. And then, but once we shot the scene, there's no song, there's no music because you put the music on, then you're attached, attaching the visual. Yes. Um, especially if they talk, it becomes tricky. Um, so yeah, usually there's no music when you see those scenes of people dancing. Stuff. Sometimes that's why if the editor is not great or the yeah. song is not right, you see them like they're, they're off. They're not dancing. They're off. <laughs> they're off. It's like them films where they in, it used to happen a lot in the seventies and eighties where you see their mouth move and then the word will come afterwards, you know, like, <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a little off. Yeah. So how do you like directing? I love directing. I, I love, I had no idea that I would love it. Um, but I guess in a way, in many ways, I've always kind of thought like a director. Um, meaning I always, very early on, I was always aware and felt limited to what I can do with my role. Because obviously there's a script, there's a director, there's 
bunch of other things. It's not just me. And um, and ideas about what I wanted to wear, but the director maybe didn't want me to wear that. Or Luckily, that's come in handy over the years because I've been able to bring stuff to the roles and, and made some roles better than they were on paper. Right. But it, it came from thinking a, as a director. And then when I started directing, I'm like, wow. I'm, I didn't write the script. In the short film, I did write the script. But my first role as a director was a, was a feature film that my wife wrote and she stars in, Pretty Rosebud. Yes, uh, and that's, that's behind got, you, right? That's behind me right there. Right there. Pretty yes. Rosebud. Yes. Um, and that's out. You can watch it. Uh, it's on Amazon, IMDb and Tubi TV and Amazon. You can, you can find it. It's on a bunch of places. Um, luckily, we got distribution. That was my first job ever as a director. I had never oh, directed a short. I had never directed anything, mm -hmm. but I had been around a lot over the years as an actor on set and paid attention. And then when I knew I was going to direct, I started talking to directors, friend of mine, friends of mine, and started asking them questions, and picking their brains, and and I was very prepared going in. But obviously, there's a lot that you can't plan as a director. But what I found was that I loved having a say of like, okay, in this scene. I want this, at this point in the story, I want this color scheme for what everybody wears. So she, no, I don't like that color for her. That's too happy at this moment in the story. I don't like that tie for him. Um, the walls, can we paint this wall? I don't like this background. Can we um, enlarge the photo that we have on the wall? It's about a bad marriage, the story. Mm -hmm. Can we enlarge the wedding photo when they're happy? I want it to be huge, the wedding photo. And I'm like, this is amazing. This is what I, I would love to have done as an actor. But obviously, as an actor, you only have so much control. Yes. And I realized, okay, in a way, I've always been directing or thinking as a director. And then obviously, there's a technical aspect of it, which I wasn't that familiar with. But with time and getting the right people around you and asking questions and paying attention, and paying attention to what lenses they're using and what the lighting is, and and you yes. learn as you go along as well. Right. And now I I just finished I just finished recently directing a feature another feature film mm -hmm. called The Summer Day that stars my wife, and we shot that during COVID. Wow! With all the limitations of COVID, we used we used uh, we had a camera. Yes. I had a DP. I was the only person on set besides my wife. And everything else was Zoom. I had the other actors on Zoom. Right. And we used the technology, Zoom, phones, everything that was how it really was during COVID. Right. If you were isolated. Yes. And um, so we're in post-production with that. So that's the, the the second feature I direct. And I did Just a Man and a Woman, which is out in film festivals right now. Right. And I also had the, the I was invited me and my wife were invited to be part of a project called uh, COVID-19 Sins and Virtues. And it's a series of, sh of shorts. Yes. An anthology. Anthology series. And that's doing the film festival circuit. And I directed one of the episodes and acted with my wife. We did everything. That was amazing. We yeah. did that right at the beginning of COVID. And we basically, the, the homework was you do everything. So my wife taught herself how to, how to edit. <laughs> that... Final Cut Pro. She knew how to edit, like in you know basic edit, but Final Cut Pro, which is a whole different. Right. So she, we edited our film. We did, we did everything. I directed. I acted. She wrote it. Our cat is in it. We used. <laughs> I'd like to see that. <laughs> yeah, it's called uh, COVID nineteen Sense of Riches. It's playing yes. at the Idlewild Film Festival. Oh, in awesome! A couple of days. Yeah. Oh. So is just a man and a woman. So we have both those films. You need to put that on social media. And talking about social media, people want to follow you. You have a Facebook and an Instagram. Facebook right? and Instagram. Instagram is probably the best way to follow me. Yes. Because Facebook, there's limits on who follows you. And oh, I, I have a fan page that I, I really don't keep up with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but on social media and Instagram, Oscar Torre mm -hmm. is my last name. Actor. And right. Follow me and send me a message saying if they saw me here, send me a message and yes. say hi. And I'm pretty good at responding to people. What was it like working on the set of uh, Hangover 3? 
it was great. It was really great. I, uh, those guys are, are, are great. All three of them. I had the pleasure of working with, uh, Zach and Ed and, and Bradley Cooper. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and those scenes were a lot of fun. Honestly, what stressed me out the most was that, uh, Todd Phillips directed with, he's fantastic. He, he, he did Joker. Mm -hmm. That's a masterpiece. I think visually that movie's amazing. And Joaquin Phoenix is amazing, but that's a different story. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot okay. of fun. It was it's hangover three. So the first two were huge hits, obviously. Yes. And coming into a, to a, a movie that this magnitude, knowing that a lot of people are going to see it. Right. Uh, it's, a little different and the huge budget and we shot in arizona we shot in la my mm -hmm. scenes i mean they shot everywhere they, yeah. they were all over the place but my scenes were shot in arizona and la and uh, the thing that got me the most nervous people thought hey were you nervous working with them i'm like not really i mean initially when you get the job you go wow this is pretty big you know it's <laughs> and it's a nice role you know and yes but once I start thinking about like my character, that I nerves go away. Yeah. What made me nervous was that I play the chief of police in Mexico, Vasquez, and my character's smoking all the time. And I'm not a smoker. Right. That must have been hard. I can smoke a, I can smoke a cigar and feel comfortable, but cigarettes? Yeah. I hate watching actors on films or TV smoking a cigarette, and I can tell right away that they don't smoke. Right. Because people who don't smoke are very aware that they're smoking. Yes. Smokers are like, so, I see, I'm talking to somebody who's a smoker and they're smoking. They finish the cigarette, they put that one out, they take another one out, they're talking to you as they like the other one, they keep going. Never think about the cigarette. And I'm like, wow, that's challenging. And then I, I was shooting the scene when we shot the end of the scene first, and then we shot the other scene like a week later in Los Angeles. But the end of the scene is that we go outside the police station. I take the three guys outside and then a, a limousine shows up and I tell them, get in the car. I don't say that nicely, right. uh, but I basically he, Bradley Cooper says, Hey, what's going on? I go, get in the effing car. <laughs> and then he gets in, he gets in the car, but I'm the reason why I walk out with them is because I'm going to smoke outside the station right. as well. So I walk out with them. And I'm nervous. It's the first thing I'm doing. I'm nervous because I, I have to light this cigarette. You do, yeah. And it's and it's really windy. <laughs> windy. <laughs> so you can't light it. <laughs> and it keeps blowing. I keep. <laughs> and what happened was that me lighting the cigarette, my action of lighting the cigarette was the cue for the limousine. To drive in, coming from oh, half a no. block away, drive in. The 50 extras, because it's a street in Mexico, supposedly. We shot in Arizona. The 50 extras, the guy selling um, tacos to come by his cart and cross right. right in front of me. And some other guy on a bicycle passing by. And the old lady crossing the street. All that was on my cue of lighting the cigarette. So I would go like, it would blow the cigarette. Okay, back to square one. Everybody back. Oh no, that takes ages of time. <laughs> and I had, and then Bradley Cooper has that line that says, "What's going on?" And I say, "Get in the car." Right. That's what I tell him there. I was so there was. It got to a point that I'm like, I have to light this cigarette. I have to, and I was so focused on lighting the cigarette. Mm -hmm because the wind was going, so I'm so focused on lighting the cigarette that I forgot that I was in the scene. I totally forgot everything. It became about me and the cigarette, lighting the cigarette and yeah. keeping the wind from blowing it. And suddenly I hear Bradley Cooper, like from very far away, although he's standing right in front of me, say, what's going on? And he kept repeating the line, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? <laughs> and I realized, I realized the scene's going on. I'm not responding. I'm trying to light this, and I'm so, I was so frustrated. And I said, "What's going on?" Is me trying to light this cigarette, and I throw the cigarette. <laughs> on the floor. Everybody starts laughing. It was fine. And I hope the they kept that in. <laughs> no, I wish that would have been that, that would have been, been funny. 
That would have been funny, yeah. But the next take, I was able to light the cigarette and everything was fine. But the pressure, I started feeling the pressure. So oh, I, people ask me, were you nervous working a film of that magnitude? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no. What I was nervous about was lighting a cigarette. Right. They should have kept that in the gag reel, though. That right? would have been good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a gag reel. <laughs> I've so got that, what, that was I've, my handwork experience. That's awesome. That's awesome, though. But I'm sorry about the cigarette part. That's that's that pretty sucks. And but, the following you know. week, the following week in Los Angeles, we were shooting the indoor scene inside the police station when I'm questioning them. And in the whole scene, I'm smoke. I'm supposed to be smoking the whole time. Todd Phillips, I guess, realizing that how much difficult I had with the cigarette, yeah. said to me, "Hey." If you want, you don't have to smoke in the scene. But what he didn't know was that since I had finished shooting the other scene, I had been smoking, I don't know how many packs of cigarettes every day to like make sure that this didn't happen again ever in my whole entire life to make the cigarette look natural and not worry about the cigarette. Really? I'm like, no, no. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm smoking in the scene. <laughs> You know, are you sure? I go, I'm smoking. This. And then it was fine. Obviously, I was inside the I was inside the studio shooting the scene. There's no wind. There's nothing. Yeah. It became very easy. But yeah. oh, you funny enough, it. He, gave, he gave me that option. So you just blow like, it oh. You blow it out, though, right? You don't inhale it. You just go. Yeah, no, I try not to inhale. Yeah, not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good job, Captain. Like, do you see us returning to a new normality? I mean, you think well, everything's going to be word there is a, a new normality. Right. I think it's, it's not nor. It won't be what it used to be. I don't think it'll ever be. No. At least for a long time. But, you know, eventually we get used to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't have to wear masks indoor any, any, anymore here in Los Angeles. And um, and I I got so used to it that it's several few times I'm like, I feel weird. It's like, oh, that's right. I don't have to wear the mask. It'd be that bad um, that the, we, we've been wearing masks that long that now people go out, <laughs> they'll realise halfway down naked. the street, they forgot to put the makeup on this part down. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the lipstick? <laughs> Gone. True. That was my wife's well, frustration. She would put lipstick, put the mask yeah, on. Yeah, I know. It would get covered. I bet the lipstick sales went down by like 55% at least. And dentists. COVID. <laughs> that's funny yes I do you are a funny gent yes you should definitely go into comedy another one maybe even stand up you'd be perfect at that so I'm sitting down <laughs> or sitting down one you could do that too stand up sitting down <laughs> what an amazing interview I love it people are going to enjoy this so, is there anything that no one has asked you in an interview that you would have liked them to ask you? I don't know, honestly. <laughs> that they've <laughs> <laughs> I've been asked. Yeah, don't know. That's okay. A lot of people say the same. No, I'm pretty much an open book, which you are. Yeah. yeah. Huh? I would never have took you for shy. I was very shy. I'm still, I'm still shy. A little Nothing bit. like I used to be, but I'm still right. shy. Yeah. If there's a big group of people and I don't know anybody, I will be, I'll be kind of like, like my wife. My wife will be in a room full of people. She'll go, hi, how are you? I'm Judy. What's your name? Oh, who do you know here? Oh, you know so-and-so. And I'm, I, I watched her and like, how can she do that? Oh, <laughs> so personality. Because you're an how introvert she- and she's probably an extrovert. She's more extrovert. Yeah, she can be the. She can go either way. Yeah. Funny enough, she likes her, but once she's in her room, it's like she turns it on, and she can basically she'll walk out of it and tell me, "Hey, so you know Samantha?" And I'm like, "Who's Samantha? The lady you were talking to." That was her name. Yes. Oh, <laughs> totally forget. I'm horrible with names. She'll know everybody's name, everybody's name in that room that she talked. Oh, to. bless her. It's incredible. Mm. It's incredible. That's a skill that I wish I had. Um, yeah, me too. I, I don't. I don't. The more people I meet, the more I can start confusing names. I'm good with faces. I me too. Face, somebody's face. I go, no, you remember? And I'll tell my wife, you remember him? We met him. She goes, no, I have no idea who that is. 
Yeah, we met him, blah, 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 blah. And then she go, is his name Bob? I'm like, I have no idea. What <laughs> <it is." laughs> I'm the same way. I've had people come up to me and goes, hi, Sam. And I'm like, hi, how are you? How are you doing? Yeah. So, hi. And they'll go, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, and then they'll walk off and I'll go to my friend. No, no clue what his name was. And I'll, I'll go, ask him what his name is. <laughs> I'll use my wife. I go, hey, have you met my wife, Judy? And I'll leave it at that. I go, Judy. And she'll know how to, she'll like, she'll do it. hi, I'm Judy. What's your name? I'm like, oh, that's, and I'll be like, I'm going to say his name, but I don't know the guy's name. I'm like, that's, and I'll let him say it. It's embarrassing for me. It's embarrassing because people like, you know, when somebody approaches me and they know my name, I go, oh, that's so nice of so-and-so to remember my name. Right. But on the other hand, to be honest, I'm horrible about remembering people's names. So yeah. is there anything else that you'd like to say to the audience? Any uh, last no. words you'd like to say? <laughs> I just about to click you over. You went, no. Nope. <laughs> um, <laughs> You're hilarious. I love it. <laughs> would you like to say anything to them? No, I, I don't even want to meet them, honestly. No, I just kidding. Uh, <laughs> don't use this part. No, uh, I mean, I'm very appreciative, honestly. I'm very appreciative of the people that follow me and, and reach out to me and support my work. Because without the audience, we don't have shows, we don't have movies. And uh, and that's not lost to me. That without the support of the audience, my work was never seen. It can be, you know, you know I might as well be working and acting inside my closet by myself. Yeah. So uh, I appreciate, I really appreciate all the support over the years. And and, and whenever I, people reach out to me and stuff like that, I, I appreciate them reaching out. So I just want to say thank you, honestly. And thank you for this opportunity to talk to you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. No, this, and thank you for attending my show because it helps, you know, I like, I enjoy talking to people, especially when it's such a great interview. And, and you know, you've been so funny. You've actually made my day and it's great. Oh, thank yes. you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for coming on Chatbox with Sam. Thank you so much. And you have a thank wonderful you. evening. You too. Appreciate it.